Here, we have that f of x is equal to the cosine of the square root of x over x squared. And we want to find f prime of x. Well, first thing I notice is that this is a quotient. So we're going to want to use the quotient rule in order to take its derivative. So f prime of x, so for the quotient rule, we start by writing the denominator, leaving it unchanged. So that's my x squared. Then it's going to be multiplied by the derivative of the numerator. So we want to take d dx of cosine of square root x. Then we're going to subtract off. Now we're going to leave the numerator the same. So we'll just write cosine of square root x. And we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the denominator, which is the derivative of x squared. And all of that goes over the denominator squared. All right. So we'll continue on. Here we have x squared. They were taking the derivative of the cosine of x squared. And in order to do so, I'm going to have to use a chain rule. Because inside that cosine is a square root x, which is another function of x. We have two functions of x going on here. So to take its derivative, we'll start with the outside function. The outside function is that cosine. We take its derivative, which is negative sine x. But instead of x, it's going to be of square root x, because we leave the inside unchanged. right? So we want to leave this unchanged. Now, because that wasn't an x, we need to multiply by its derivative to finish out the chain rule. So square root x is the same as x to the 1 half. In order to take its derivative, we pull down that exponent. So we have 1 half x. And we subtract 1 from the exponent, leaving an exponent of negative 1 half. Well, we're going to subtract off. Here we have the cosine of square root x times the derivative of x squared. Again, just a power rule. So we have 2 x. And all of that is over x to the fourth. So we're going to simplify this out a bit. So to start, I want to multiply that x squared by that x to the negative one half. In order to multiply it out, we add exponents. And 2 plus a negative one half gives me x to the three halves. Now that's being multiplied by a negative sine square root x. And here we're subtracting off 2x times the cosine of the square root of x. And all of that is over x to the fourth. And there's just a little bit more simplification that we can do here, because in the numerator, there are x's on both sides of the product. So I can factor out that x. Go up here, continue our work. So what happens when I factor out an x from both sides? So let's start there. We'll put an x here because we factored it out. And I'm going to be left with that negative sign stays. Now x to the 3 halves. If I factor out an x from x to the 3 halves, the factoring out is the same as division. So we want to think about what happens when you take x to the 3 halves and divide it by an x. Well, I want to subtract those exponents. So this will be x to the 3 halves minus 1, or x to the 1 half. So I'm left with an x to the 1 half here, times the sine of the square root of x, minus 2 times the cosine of the square root of x. And we don't want to forget our denominator, so let's give us a little bit of room and space for that. All of that is still over x to the fourth. Oh goodness, there's one more thing we can do here. Now we have a product in the numerator, right there. And in that product we have an x. And we have four x's in the denominator, so I can cancel that x with one of the x's down here. So we're going to be left with negative x to the one half sine square root x minus 2 times the cosine of square root x all over x cubed.
And that looks to be as simple as we're going to be able to get in here. So this problem not only had a quotient rule, but it had a chain rule. So it was a chain rule inside a quotient rule.